All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Monday, December 20th, 2021. So market's down 1% here on the S&P, 1.1 on the Triple Q, 1.2 on the Diamond, and 1.4 on the Russell. Um, definitely one of the strangest trading sessions I've ever been a part of. Um, there was some serious weirdness and very suspect things going on today. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, what you know, my thoughts were. Um, and, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. So basically, today was very, very, very strange. Uh, markets down over, down 1.5% at one point on the S&P here, and the VIX was up 18%. I want to take a look at side-by-side -side here of the VIX versus the VXX. So typically, uh, in most cases, when uh, volatility spikes, the VIX will outperform VXX, the exception being um, when there is a major panic and future volatility is priced in as the VXX looks at contango and further, uh, you know, further out contracts than the VX, uh, than the VIX, which is mainly just a front contract. Um, so, well, who cares, right? Well, the VIX was up, you know, 18%, VXX up 10. And then notice here how the VIX, the actual VIX stalled out and VXX uh, continued to chug higher. So that suggests uh, that there's contango and VIX uh, in volatility. And the market was at least, according to this, pricing in future volatility. Um, that's very strange to see um, that happen with the markets down 1%. And, you know, we look at, you know, the S&P, it's not like it was a bloodbath. I mean, we grinded lower for the first two hours, and then we, you know, came back up here. Um, it wasn't a total bloodbath. And the other strange part, the other really strange thing, if we look at the daily volume here, daily volume on the spiders, um, you know, we finished with 105 million, which is significant sell-off volume. If that's that's typically what you know you look for. A lot of it came in the last 10 minutes, uh, which was just buy side volume, probably some short covering or something like that. Um, but this is not so VIX is saying panic, essentially. VIX up 18% at one point, 20% at one point, challenging the 28 handle. Um and the the S and P is basically yawning. I mean, it's it's very very strange to see the market down this much with this little volume, um, and it's like there's there's signals of panic, but there's really not panic going on. It's very very strange. So there's definitely some uh, there's definitely some serious BS going on in my opinion. Now, could it be just like um, you know the light volume uh, because it's the holidays and we're getting close to the holidays? Possible. Um, but typically, when you have the holiday volume, that means the market just usually just floats sideways to up. You know, maybe you have a, a day where you're down like, you know, half a percent or four, t four tenths of a percent or something. But typically, we don't see a, this type of a move on you know, during a holiday like this. And uh, there's just very, very strange stuff going on. But anyways, as far as the technicals are concerned, we held the 100 moving average on the S&P. I was expecting an up day. Um, I was thinking that we were going to be up. Um, in the beginning of the week, get a little bit of a relief bounce from last week. Um, but, you know, we, we flushed down and we did close. Um, we did have a nice kind of a, I guess, a little bit of a pop into the close. So maybe there's some upside tomorrow. Maybe we can fill this gap and trade up a little bit here. But I was surprised to see volatility spike as much as it did. Um, Dow Jones, uh, Diamond here did hold the 100, or uh, excuse me, 200 day moving average. So that was tested. Triple Q is again the weakest one. Um, well, that and the Russell. Um, Triple Q is making a new low. So it didn't close below the lows, but it made a new low. Got down to that 100 MA. Um, look on the weekly, you know, gap down here, um, taking out these lows. Just not a really good look here. It doesn't mean it can't reverse and get a bid, but not showing strength here. Um, NASDAQ 100. Russell 2000 coming down into this double bottom. It did close well off the lows. Nice tail candle. So that is trying to bottom. We talked about that last week. Um, it is a little oversold here. Um, you can actually take, you can, I can actually tell just without even looking at it, but I'll show you. You can, you know, there's a bullish divergence here on the RSI. So this is a little oversold right now. Um, but, you know, Russell is weak, um, as is the NASDAQ. Um, some other sectors that got hit a little bit today, retail. So XRT taking a, a big hit. Like look at how volatile Walmart has been. Now, this is not typically a volatile stock, but this having a, uh, a Total roller coaster last week, all the way up and then ripped right back down. A little bit of a bounce today. Look at Target. Um, Target has come way off the highs. Nice little tail candle here. It did find some support here, but this was down pretty big at one point. 
Um, probably gets a little bit of a bounce, but you've already closed. You've confirmed below that 200 moving average. The trend is now down on target um, on the daily time frame here. So uh, retailers getting hit a little bit. Let's look at the semis. Um, down 1.28% here on the SMH. You just held on to that 50 MA. And there's a lot of charts here. We're going to go over a couple of them. There's a lot of charts, and this is one of them, that they're on, they're teetering. They're teetering on the brink. So we lose this 50 MA, it's right back to 275, and that's not going to be good for the market. The NASDAQ will roll over if the semis roll over. Uh, IGV Cloud Software here, it hold double bottom, so that is hanging on for now. But again, um, you know, if this breaks down, you're going to have this trend line support down here, and your next level would probably be get through that right around that 360 area. So, um, again, this, that's the level there on cloud. Let's take a look at the transports. So, first glance, all right, you know, you got the 100, the 200 below, held this double bottom. Nothing's wrong, right? Well, the problem is, you close below this green bar low. This was your uh, breakout low off top bar. Close below that on a weekly basis last week. So, Dow transports are now vulnerable. Um, first level would be, let's call it 14,950. So 15,000 roughly, got that 50 MA weekly in that vicinity. So um, I do expect the Dow Transports to go test that. Um, that's a sign of weakness there. On that, I mean, there's, there's, some, there's some serious cracks in the armor right now. Um, let's look at the XLF. This is not a good look for XLF. Did come off the lows. You, you found some support at the 200. Basically closed right on this trend line. Look at the weekly, not a great look there. Um, let's take a look at the broker dealers. Broker dealers were very weak today. Um, almost triggered a head and shoulders. Uh, they did manage to close it back above. Um, but if this closes back down there, I mean, that's, you know, that is going to head lower. Goldman Sachs triggered a head and shoulders today. Um, so Goldman, below the 200, gap below the 200, and he triggered a head and shoulders. So um, to work the target out on that, probably going down to you know, 340, 345, just off the top of my head. Um, maybe a little bit lower. Maybe you can get down into the... Yeah, 340 or so, but not a good look. JP Morgan coming off the lows, but a weak look here. Bank of America losing the 100 gap down. So financials are not looking good. We talked about this last couple of weeks, um, and that's not a good sign of strength for the overall market, especially if tech is weak. Financials need to be strong. Um, and it's just, you know, if the NASDAQ's not going to lead, you're going to need financials to pick up the rear here. And XLE wasn't really doing any favors either. You know, it did come off the lows like everything else did, held the 200, but, you know, that's a pretty ugly gap down. XOP, same thing, um, closed below the 200 MA. OIH, this one's been weak for a while here. Uh, this one just barely hang on to the lows, so not a really good look in the energy stocks. Crude, however, did um, have a nice reversal here. I love these types of setups. Uh, when you have a, you know, a bullish pattern, and then you have a, this is called a test candle. So it came down here, you know, a bunch of amateurs, prematurely probably shorted and then they got ripped back up and now you have a nasty tail here and all those bears got trapped so this should have some fuel um, to go attack those highs we talked about over the last couple of weeks 75 and then possibly up to 77 there so i do actually like the setup here on crude right now nat gas um it's trying to hang on here we talked about how it tested the lows last friday just barely hung on now getting a little bit of bounce i still think this is backing and filling for a move lower uh, this 50 MA is not going to hold for very long, um, and that gas will head lower, and I already have buy levels worked out for that. Um, let's move on here and talk about the yield. So 10-year yield, actually, let's just look at the, uh, the bond. So it was up uh, pretty um, significantly overnight, and then by the open, it was flat, and yield's got a nice bid on the open. Uh, if we look here, gap down, nice reversal there. Same thing on the TYX 30-year. Look at that monster bid on the 30-year yield, and that was probably helping uh, crude to reverse some of those losses as crude was down over 5% at one point, and it did rally back probably because of the higher yield. Um, so yield's getting a little bit of a bid here as well. Gold really not doing a whole lot. Did come in off the highs um, and actually kind of flushed a little bit into the close. But ultimately, if it can hold the upper range of this green bar here, you know, I guess it could set up for a move higher. Maybe attack that 1840 to 1850 area, but again, ultimately nothing's changed here on gold. Just in a range, silver, same kind of thing. Um, platinum was down uh, pretty heavily earlier. Did finish green, so nice, nice little pop back for platinum and palladium as well. Was down, um, just kind of pulling back here off the 20. Uh, nothing really doing on palladium right now. Uh, Bitcoin 
this is another strange thing. So with the market down 1%, Bitcoin was actually uh, green today. I'm um, actually getting even more of a bid. I think it closed up about 1%, now up two and a quarter here in Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's rallying a little bit. Um, so another little bit of a divergence, you'd think with, um, if there was going to be risk off in the market, something like Bitcoin would be down. There wasn't. Um, the dollar index also was not you know, significantly higher. So we didn't see a lot of risk off. Treasuries weren't bidding. The dollar wasn't really bidding. Gold wasn't bidding. So we're seeing the market down 1% and we're seeing the VIX go absolutely ballistic with no other panic signals. Very, very, very odd. Um, speaking of Bitcoin, um, Ethereum actually holding up a little bit better than Bitcoin. This is, you know, it's still kind of got this inside bar here. If we zoom in, still a little bit of an inside bar here on Ethereum, but you have a reversal bar inside of that. So, you know, if you can close above this high, 41.61, um, Ethereum can, um, you know, make another advance here. But Bitcoin um, getting a bit of a bid, and, uh, you know, I thought after OpEx it would start to catch some air and maybe it'll get some win in its sales here. So crypto might maybe do for a, uh, a bid in the coming days here. Um, anyways, that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, there's still a lot of, you know, there's still a lot of turbulence in this market. Um, you, know, you can't really seem to find a consensus. You know, there's a lot of bulls out there. There's a lot of bears out there too. Uh, we've got the holidays coming up. So there's lots of, uh, there's that to contend with. And January is always a tricky month, but um, we're still going to remain on guard here moving forward. Anyways, guys, uh, take care. Have a great rest of your night. I'll talk to you tomorrow.